Okay, so today we're going to talk about geometric sequences. Remember, sequences is just a pattern of numbers, so we still are going to have two different forms of how we can write our equations. We have recursive, so remember in recursive you have to state the starting value, and our mathematicians are weird because they start at zero, so you would have like f of zero equals, and then there should be a number here for the starting value. And then we also have to give our equation, which is f of n equals f of n minus one, that whole thing means previous, plus or minus whatever the pattern is. And then we also have explicit, which is still f of n. This time we have, um, it's all in one equation. So we have the starting value plus or minus, that's just depending on what the pattern is, the pattern times n. So remember in this one, the variable goes with the pattern. That's how you recognize what the pattern is. The thing that you need to take a note of, so you should have written all of that down just as a reminder, all of this is for arithmetic sequences. Okay, and today we're going to talk about geometric sequences. So a geometric sequence, instead of adding or subtracting the same thing every time, in a geometric sequence, we are going to multiply or divide by the same thing every time. So we're going to multiply or divide, and this time it's not called a common difference, it's called a common, um, so we can say by a common ratio. And if you ever see it in an equation, it's the letter R. Okay, so an example, if you want to just put, we can put two quick little examples in our notes. An example of a geometric sequence might be, um, let's see, 2, 6, 18, oh, 54. All right, so that would be, right, you're multiplying by 3 every time, times 3 times 3. I hope I did that multiplication right. Um, another example would be, you can also divide. So an example might be 24, negative 12, 6, and negative 3. Um, notice here, you're dividing because it's getting smaller, and it's also changing signs. So this is division by negative 2, um, division by negative 2. So either one of those gives you geometric. Now what I really want you to see from this is how these are very similar to the recursive and explicit formulas before, but um, what the differences are. So for geometric, so for recursive, we're still going to have to say where we start. So that part's going to stay the same. So we're going to say f of 0 um, equals our starting value. You can just copy that from above. And now it's still going to look the same. We're still going to have f of n equals the previous term, except this time we're not adding or subtracting. We're going to be multiplying or dividing. And I'm I'm really just going to say multiplication. We'll talk about what division looks like. So this time we're just going to be multiplying by the pattern. So hopefully you notice the difference here is that you're multiplying and not adding or subtracting pattern. All right, and then the explicit formula. Now this one is going to look just a little bit different. All right, the explicit formula is still going to be f of n, and we actually are still going to have our starting value. Instead of adding or subtracting, we're going to multiply by our pattern, and when we multiply, think about when you multiply over and over and over again, you write that as an exponent, right? Like two to the third power is two times two times two. So since the pattern is happening over and over again, it's the pattern to the n power. All right, so now we're not multiplying by n, n is our power, n is an exponent. All right, so make sure you have all that so that we can work some examples. Okay, here we go. Um, we're going to write recursive first. So this is going to ask us to do both things. So recursive is going to be first. Remember, we have to say our starting point. So f of 0 equals 3. We get that from the first part of our table. And then um, we've got our next term equals our previous term, n minus 1. And then we have to think about what is happening. So if we come up here and look at our table, our pattern this time it's not adding the same thing every time, it's a multiplication pattern. And you should notice that you're, hopefully you notice you're multiplying by two every time. So when we write our formula, it's not plus or minus anymore, now it's gonna be times two. That's because that's our pattern. So it's still the same kind of mentality. All right, and then explicit, we just put our starting point as part of our equation. So f of n equals our starting value, three times, we're multiplying by 2, 
over and over and over again, so that's times 2 to the n power. Don't let this top part um, of the table up here confuse you, this back part. It just means it's going to go on and forever and ever, so you can kind of ignore that. Okay, so this one is going to be very similar. Um, remember with recursive, we want to start, um, we have to give our starting value. Even though you can say it starts at 1, it's probably better for us to just go ahead and get in the habit of starting at 0 every time. So we need to think about what our pattern is. And if you look here, um, notice that they're getting smaller. And if we think multiplication or division, this is dividing by 2 each time. Not by 2, I'm sorry, dividing by 5. All right, we're dividing by 5 each time. So to go the other direction, I've got to multiply by 5, which means my 0 value out here is going to be 125. All right, that's just me doing 25 times 5 to go the other direction. So I can still say the starting value of my recursive formula now, f of 0 equals 125. And then we can say f of n equals the previous term, f of n minus 1. Now, instead of doing division, you do need to be in the habit of writing this as a multiplication problem every time. But because it's division, we can just write it like a fraction, 1 over 5, right? Because a fraction means division. So you can say times 1 fifth. We'll talk about that more tomorrow if you need help with that. And then explicit, not too bad. All right, we're going to say our starting value. Remember, we start at 0 out here, so my starting value is 125 times. I'm multiplying by 1 fifth every time, and I want to do that to the n power. Um, you should put this part in parentheses, 1 fifth um, to the n power, or else your calculator is going to misunderstand what you mean when you try to type that in for what we're going to do later. Okay, you don't necessarily need to put this one in your notes, um, but let's do break down what we have here. They tell us that the starting value is 2, and they tell us, if you look here, my pattern is always with my variable, so this means I'm going to be multiplying by 2 every single time. They also tell me to start with the 0 term. So at the 0 term, they told me it was 2, right? We know that. Then they say we need to multiply by 2 every time, so the next term is going to be 4. And then if I multiply by 2 again, I'm going to get 8. And if I could go again, my next term would be 16, um, and then 32, and so on and so forth. Hopefully that kind of makes sense how you interpret that. Um, B here, they've given us a recursive rule. So they actually wrote this a, a different way, so I'm going to rewrite it the way that we like to see it, f of n minus 1, um, and they said times 0 0.5. They also give us a starting value of 0 at 16. So at 0, I know I'm going to start at 16. And this just means I take the previous term, so 16, and then this is my pattern. My pattern is going to be to multiply by 0 0.5, which is the same as 1 half. Or, you all might see, because that's a fraction, I'm really dividing. And I'm dividing, if you look, that's division by 2. So that means I'm I should be dividing um, by 2 every time. So if 16 is my first value, my second value should be at 8. Um, notice that here they're counting, they're not counting by 1s on the bottom, they're counting by 2s. And then my next value should be 4. And then half of 4 is 2, and half of 2 is 1, and then 1 half. And um, I don't know if you're going to see this yet, but if you keep cutting a number in half, you're never going to get to 0, which means I just want you to see where this comes in handy. This right here is an asymptote. Remember, an asymptote's a line that you can never touch. You're going to keep cutting in half, but you're never going to be able to touch 0. So that's going to be an asymptote. That, this is where asymptotes come in handy if you're thinking about why we learned that so long ago. Okay, this time I think the word problems are going to make a little bit more sense to you. Remember, for any given thing, we need a starting point and we need a pattern. So that's what we're looking for when we read um, our word problem here. So if I read, it says, uh, Wimbledon's Ladies Single Championship begins with 128 players. 
each match, two players play and only one moves on. All right, two play and only one moves on. So my starting point, that's pretty easy to come up with. That's going to be 128. And then it, and then my pattern, uh, we're, we have um, two players in each round and only one moves on. So think about that. We're like cutting in half every single time. So my pattern is either, you can think about it two ways, it's either to divide by two or think about what that means, that if I'm dividing, I need a fraction. So that means I'm going to be multiplying um, by one half. So remember for our, our formula, we want the multiplication part. Also for word problems, you always want to use the explicit rule. So for here, um, we're going to say 100 and, oh, that's not where we start, f of n, sorry, equals our starting value, 128, times 1 half to the n power. Remember fractions, we always need to put in parentheses. The last thing we need to do is read our equation and just set up how we would solve it. So it says the players compete until there is only one winner. So here it's not telling, N is telling me like the number of rounds. That's how many times I have to divide over. That's not what they're telling me. They're telling me I only have one winner. So to solve this, and we're not necessarily going to solve it, but I just want you to set up to solve it, we would say one equals 128 times one half n. This is something we will talk about how to solve um, a little bit later. So right now you just need to be able to write it out. That's all we've got for today. Hopefully you feel better about this than you did yesterday.